Hello everybody and welcome, I am Rickaboom, and we're going to be expanding a little bit on our typical Pokemon content. I've been doing Pokemon challenges for quite a while now, and while I love that, I want to be able to keep expanding as a creator, and also still be able to bring something that's a little bit different to the channel, while also kind of sticking to my niche. So with that, I wanted to go ahead and take a look at the Pokemon Gym Leaders. We'll probably end up going through a decent amount of the gyms, but I feel like the best place to start is at the beginning. Because what is the first thing that you look at when you're playing a Pokemon game? Aside from the Pokemon that you can catch, it's probably going to be the Gym Leaders, and let's face it, not all gyms are created equal. So what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to be covering Pokemon Fire Red Leaf Green. The reason behind this is because when games are released, that's typically the best that they have to offer. What we're going to be doing is taking a look at the teams of every gym leader and then seeing if we can go ahead and make it better, whether it's removing duplicates or uh, just providing a different Pokemon entirely. More often than not, we're going to be focusing on the duplicate situation and seeing what we can do to make that team a little bit more diverse. So, with that, we're going to go ahead, we are going to HMO8 on in. We're going to go ahead and start with Brock, and I'm going to be honest, Brock is fine. He has two different Pokemon that are both raw ground types, and it's a pretty good start and a good way to go ahead and introduce people into the game. And then also, just as a side note, if you like videos like this, we can do more reimagined teams, whether it's making them the last gym leader or making them the Pokemon champion, etc. But I do need your help and I need you to go ahead and drop a comment below if you like this kind of idea. Even if it's just disagreeing with me, that's fine too, because it at least lets me know that you're engaged with what I'm doing. Anyway. With Misty, this is where we're going to go ahead and start changing up the teams at least a little bit, because Starmie is going to go ahead and stay as her ace. Starmie is a solid type, both water psychic, it's got a very strong water move in the remakes, especially with water pulse. However, I think that we can get rid of Staryu and have a few pretty good options. Now, the first option is obviously Psyduck. Psyduck was her companion in the anime. We could also do Horsey because she did have a Horsey in the anime as well, but what I would actually recommend is Seal. Seal has a pretty similar base stat total to Staryu, and on top of that, it would also go ahead and at least allow us to introduce the concept of Ice-type Pokémon and make it so the Grass Starters aren't going to be stomping over the first half of the game, essentially it would give fire types a little bit more of an advantage to be able to go ahead and be useful. Now, I know that you're not going to find any fire types between Viridian Forest and here, but if you chose Charmander as your starter, by now you have a Charmeleon, and it should, even if we're going by Nuzlocke terms, unless the, the moveset is completely jail-busted, should be able to go ahead and stand up to it pretty effectively. Next up, we have Lieutenant Surge, and this is a pretty easy fix. I would honestly swap out Pikachu for Magnemite. The main reason being is that Pikachu got a lot of time to shine in the anime, obviously, and on top of that, it also has Pokemon Yellow, where it had its time to shine. I understand that Raichu is important in regards especially to the anime, because that was what Pikachu stood up to, was able to beat, etc., plot armor nonsense. But, I think replacing Pikachu with Magnemite would honestly be the best call. You've still got Voltorb because it's fine, it's a completely different Pokémon. Raichu is spot on to the anime, so why not go ahead and add in Magnemite, just to give him a fully diverse team, but still again sticking to the electric types. As we move on to the essentially middle of the game, I want to go ahead and kindly remind you to subscribe because it is as easy as 1, 2, 3, and you know what else is easy as 1, 2, 3? Moving on from Erica's team. She has three Pokemon grass types that are all different, and I think that's perfect, and the best part about that is, in my opinion, is the fact that she has Tangela. Tangela, overall, is a pretty weak Pokemon, but it's also the only pure grass type that Kanto had. Once Johto is involved, we obviously have a few more, but 
This early on in the series, I think it works out quite well, personally. Now it's time to go ahead and move on to Koga, and, and this is where things get a little bit tricky, because we do have a decent amount of poison-type Pokémon that actually are available. However, I don't think it actually makes sense to give him either Nidoking or Nidoqueen, because that's what Giovanni has, and I really don't want to be sharing too many Pokémon between two different teams, because that just makes Giovanni's Pokémon seem less special. So what I would recommend is actually swapping out the first coughing for Beedrill. Beedrill isn't necessarily the best Pokémon by any standards, however, it does have the ability to swoop in fast and hit hard because it has a halfway decent attack stat, and you can always send it out first, this way you get essentially the weakest out of the way, as you typically do, and then be able to move on. And then for the second coughing, I would actually recommend that he steals Sabrina's Venomoth, because it doesn't make sense for Sabrina to have it, and I've never understood it, but it's fine. The Muck and the Weezing can stay, giving him a pretty solid team. At this stage in the game, if we're going to be going up against Pokémon that aren't fully evolved, it seems a little bit odd, it also seems a little bit lazy. I understand that they're not going to have, like, fully evolved powerhouse teams by any mean, but I feel like this is a pretty fair team. You've got two Pokémon that aren't exactly super strong, and then you've got two tanks that are able to absorb a lot of damage, so I think this is actually a pretty good setup for it. Gym 6, and we have Kadabra. Alakazam, Mr. Mime, and, well, Venomoth flew off to Koga's gym. Now, the only reason I gave him a Venomoth is because I think that he had a lot of Venonat in the anime, so I think that it would be a fun callback. So, since we're at least going to be going by anime logic, let's go ahead and give Sabrina a Haunter instead of Venomoth. The problem with this gym specifically is there aren't very many Psychic types without straight up giving her a Mewtwo. So, what I would recommend is giving her a Jinx, an Alakazam, a Mr. Mime, and a Haunter. Or Gengar, just kind of depending, but yeah, unfortunately there are not a whole lot of Psychic types to be able to choose from. Actually, I guess we could also do Slowbro. I like Slowbro better than Jinx, but the problem is you're running into the fact that Lorelei also has these as well, so... Kind of take that one with a bit of a grain of salt. It, there really isn't a way to make it so that she has a unique team, and on top of that, one that is not going to be running into anybody else, which I guess is also the same meaning as unique. My brain hurts. As we move on to Blaine, this is where I don't understand the pre-evolved form and the final form of each Pokémon being something you're going up against. You have Growlithe, then you have Ponyta, eh, alright Pokémon, but then you have Arcanine and you have Rapidash. It, it does not make sense for you to be fighting the pre-evolved and the final evolved form, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change the Growlithe to Ninetales and the Ponyta to Flareon, or, if we want to go by the anime version, a Magmar. I do understand in most cases, fire types are difficult to come by, especially in a Nuzlocke, but Blaine isn't playing in a Nuzlocke, and I demand for my fictional characters to have a more diverse team, because then I can make a video talking about how perfect that team is, and not have to waste your time with this. I'm gonna really hate Johto. Last up for the gym leaders, we have Giovanni, and I only want to change one of his Pokémon. I want to swap out one of the Rhyhorns for Kangaskhan, since he has it in other encounters, then I would also just take that last Rhyhorn and make it a Rhydon. With him being the last gym leader, I think it makes sense if his Pokémon are fully evolved, and while Kangaskhan is neither of these things, it's still so much better than an Onix, even if it doesn't fit the typing. Onix is just terrible, y'all. Now with that, I would say that it's go-ahead and time to move on to the Elite Four, and first up is Lorelei, and her team is perfect. She says that she's an Ice Master, and honestly, it fits. Each Pokémon she has has a dual typing, but it still remains true to that Ice type. To add to that, each Pokémon is different, and honestly, that's solid. You don't realize how many dual Ice types there are until you fight Lorelei's team or you're making a video, and you have to know how many ice types there are. 
From there, it's time to move on to fighting Master Bruno, and here's where we need to just make one change. The good news is he has a pretty diverse fighting team, but the two Onyx are the issue. There's one fighting type Pokemon left, and that's Polygraph. This way he has a full diverse team. I would lead still with the first Onyx just to get it out of the way, and then every Pokemon beyond that is at least a fighting type, and on top of that, it also just gives him a little bit more coverage, and Poliwrath isn't a Pokemon that's used very much at all, even though in the Pokemon anime, Poliwhirl was such a prevalent part of it, it's kind of surprising that nobody seems to actually carry this little dude with him. So I would love to see it. Then we have Agatha, and we're running into the issue of her saying that she's a Ghostmaster, but all of her Pokemon are part Poison type as well. Due to that, I want to go ahead and replace Haunter with Vileplume, or Parasect, given the fact that it's a fungus Pokemon that is essentially a zombie dead at this point, so I think it would fit pretty well, especially from Pokedex entries. Then from there, the weaker Gengar, I would say to go ahead and give her a Muck. Unfortunately, there isn't enough ghost typing to go around, but since Poison also seems to be her specialty, I think this team works well enough, and, and Muck can, like, I know ghost Pokemon go into the shadows, but, like, Muck can just make himself a pile of sludge, and I think it works, kinda, sorta. Finally, we have Lance, and I'll be honest, this one's kinda tricky. There are so few dragon types in the game, but thankfully he doesn't seem to mind a little bit of diversity. Overall, the two Dragonairs are the problem, and while we may have to make him relinquish the title of Dragon Tamer, we have a couple options. I think, given the fact that he has an Aerodactyl, shows that he has access to the technology in Cinnabar, and I know that this would be kind of uh, cheap, <laughs> given the fact that this is Brock's, most of Brock's Pokemon team in Heart Gold, Soul Silver, but I think that honestly the best call for him is giving him the prehistoric Pokemon, and in that I mean Amasar and Kabutops. Because here's the thing, the Two Dragonair are almost completely useless. At least if he has Almastar and Kabutops, it's at least a completely diverse team. It shows that he is a master of Pokemon, and it just it works out so much better than having these two Dragonair that all they do is Thunder Wave, Hyper Beam, Fire Blast, and that's it. They are a one-trick pony that really can't do much. Now, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the final rival, and his team is fine. He has a well-diverse team that changes slightly with each starter he has, but the core elements remain the same. The only thing that I would consider is swapping out Pidgeot for Dodrio, since that is a better Pokémon overall. So if you've made it this far into the video, thank you. And if you like watching me assemble Pokémon teams, make sure to check out the Pokémon by Daylight series. We take all the different Unalivers and all the different Survivors and go ahead and give them a full team of six Pokemon, and honestly, I have a lot of fun with that. If there are teams that you don't agree with, or that you would like to see changed, make sure to go ahead and drop them in the comments. The only person that I refuse to touch is Youngster Joey, because he has a top percentage Rattata. So, with that being out of the way, if you liked the video, even if you didn't like the video, think about hitting the like and subscribe button, because it really does help me out. And until next time, everybody, peace out.